Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Grand Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today we're going to be heading back straight into Northern Realms because today we're going to be taking a look at Commandos, but not just the standard list of Commandos. We're going to go into a new deck called the Cooldown Commandos. Now, before we do that, I wanted to show you this list first. So this is the standard Commandos Metal deck. This is going to be the deck that's in our snapshot as well. Uh, and the deck that we're going to be playing today is a variation on this. But this is a very consistent deck, but it only has the Commandos focus. And that's what I wanted to change ever so slightly. So we could have a lot more options during a match than just creating a bunch of commandos. But here you have a consistency of Cursed Scroll where you can draw a card of your choice on Aeromancy and Amphibious Assault along with the entire deck being boosted by Erland of Larvik. Um, other than that, yeah, there's just a lot of tools to create commandos. You have the two at the start, you have reinforcements, you have megascopes and you have the Blue Stripes Scouts. So lots and lots of commandos and of course King Foltest himself. But we're not going to be playing this list, but this is the list that you uh, might want to go for if you really want to go for the meta version. But enough talk about this version, let's head into my cooldown commandos version. So this is cooldown commandos. As the name implies, we combine commandos with a lot of units that actually have a cooldown. So try to use their ability every several turns. So for example, we have Shani, we have Dandelion, we have Foltest Sprite, and we have War Chariot. A lot of cards that can reuse their order ability after X number of turns. But uh, yeah, this is the deck we're gonna be playing with. I'm gonna go through each card one by one, but as always, you can check out the entire deck guide on the Play Quent website as well. The link is in the description. And if you know what all these cards do, you can skip right ahead to the example matches. Now the main difference with the meta deck is that this is a devotion deck. You know me, I'm a fan of devotion, so when I can I'm gonna try and aim for that. So we start off with two Karak Marines, so 3 power and boost a unit by 4 if you have devotion, which is the case on order, and you have zeal as well. So a very easy 7 points for 4 and also giving you a very good target for Sean. You can also see Contra them, the devil himself on this card. But uh, yeah, this is uh, one of the stronger four provision cards and can definitely help to keep your older cards alive. Now we have Siege Ladder. A Siege Ladder is usually used in a Commandos deck to move one of the Commandos by the end to the other row and then start filling out that row as well, since usually you spawn the other Commandos on the same row as you. But with Sie Siege Ladder, you have four provisions, four power, and on deploy you move an allied unit to your other row. If you're flanked by two soldiers, you actually boost the unit that you move by two as well. So possibly up to six with a move. But the move itself is basically where the value of this card lies. Now we have one Centrion Envoy. I think a lot of people overlook this card. It's also four power, has formation, so either you can put it on the melee row and use order immediately, or you can put it on the range row and she gets boosted up to five. The order ability is look at three random cards from your deck and move one to the top and she can do this every two turns. Basically allowing you consistency in your deck for the next round so you know what you're gonna draw. Or the other way around, if you're facing Mill, which is happening constantly these days, you can use her to constantly put a crappy card on top of your deck so those cards get banished and not your important gold cards. Then of course, as we've talked about before, to copy the commandos, we have the blue stripe scout, so four power, deploy on the melee row and you spawn a copy of a bronze allied unit at the top of, well, the bottom of your deck. But if it's a commando, you can pull that out with the other commandos in one go. Then the siege report is basically to have a bit of a replacement for your leader ability in case you're out of charges or something else is happening. Also for power, if you deploy him on the melee ray row, you reduce the cooldown of an allied unit by one. We have plenty of cooldown units, so that's going to come in handy as well. And if you deploy him on the range row, instead you boost an allied unit by one. And his order ability is very important because that can give an allied unit zeal. So allowing them to use their order ability immediately. So it can be used on commandos or can be used on any other card that has an order ability. Then the winch. The winch is of course very important if you're using cooldown units. It's a warfare card where you boost an allied unit by five and then reduce its cooldown by three, which is huge. So we're going to be showing off a few other cards that have quite large cooldowns and this card just uh, handles that by him itself. 
Uh, and there's a cute little mouse here on the uh, on the winch itself, which is also a co cool little detail. And then we have one reinforced ballista just to fill in that one uh, five provision slot. You could also use boiling oil for this slot, uh, but I liked to add another cooldown card. And with the few uh, warfare cards that we're actually actually using, we're getting a lot of benefits here as well. So three power, one armor, has formation and an order ability where you can damage a unit by one, which refreshes every turn and refreshes as well if you use a warfare card. And then of course the blue stripes commandos themselves, four power and on order you summon all copies of this unit from your deck to this row. So uh, yeah, we're gonna be copying this guy mostly, most of the time to as much as we can so we can uh, resurrect them later on and then put them all on the board again. So uh, blue stripes commando is the crux of this deck. Then we're heading into the 6 provision range, so Margarita has zeal, 6 power and another ability where you can lock an enemy unit, so basically giving you a little bit of control, which this deck doesn't have a lot of, but uh, with this you actually have a few options. And then reinforcements is the warfare card where we can spawn and play a base copy of another bronze allied unit. You want to go for the scouts with this one, so you play a scout and then another commando, so this card becomes 8 points instead of just 4. Then we have the War Chariot. I think a lot of people underestimate the War Chariot. You have another crew benefit here, but because the commandos usually have a soldier pocket on the board, uh, he, well, it has five power, where you have the order ability on the melee row where you give four turns of bleeding to an enemy unit, or if you put him on the ranged row, you move an enemy unit to the other row. But if your crew, so if you put this card between two soldiers, you combine both order abilities at once. And this card just recently got another cooldown as well for three turns. So basically allowing Winch to reset this every turn. Um, very powerful, especially with the movement ability, otherwise you don't have a move option for Northern Realms, but with this card you actually do, so you can take out row locked units this way. Then of course, since we're playing commandos, Voimir can't be omitted, so 5 power, 1 armor and on deploy you boost an allied unit and all of its copies by 1 and give them 1 armor, so definitely going to be using that on the commandos themselves. Then John Natal is 2 power and he's basically a tutor for any warfare card from your deck. We're going to be usually pulling either reinforcements or of course amphibious assault with this card uh, and you need to put him on the melee row. He also counts as a soldier for your soldier pockets, so for your crew abilities, so uh, keep that in mind as well. Then we have Foltest Pride, another cooldown card for 5 power and 1 armor, 8 provisions. Has zeal and the order ability is damage an enemy unit by two and its adjacent units by one. So four damage in total, already giving you nine points. But the um, Fault of Sprite actually has a cooldown of four turns. But if you put him in between two soldiers, so on crew, you set the cooldown to two. Um, this doesn't change when you, for example, don't put it in between two soldiers first, so it's four turns then it goes to three on your next turn but if you then put another soldier right next to it so it is crew the cooldown will not go immediately to two it only checks this on uh deploys so on the start when you place the card down and every time the cooldown resets it can either go to four or to two so uh, something to keep in mind but definitely can have a lot of point potential um, especially with the other cooldown reducing cards because if it's cooldown two that means that with a um Siege support, you can actually reset its order ability immediately since the cooldown is reduced by another turn. Then of course Princess Pavetta, 6 power, and on deploy you shuffle a bronze unit and all of its copies from the graveyard back into your deck. So we're going to be using this card to put all the commandos that we've created in round 1 back into the deck in round 2 or 3, and then pull them from there to continue on. Then we have Southkirk of Gullet, our main high power damage healer, so 5 power, order on the melee row, dual an enemy unit, and with our leader ability we can trigger this immediately, so uh, definitely one of our, well, our only very big hitter. Now we have Dandelion. I think a lot of people overlook Dandelion in a Commandos deck as well. Because Dandelion starts at 6 power, but if you give him one of your leader charges, he immediately allows you to boost a unit in your deck by 2. You want to be going for either Commandos or something like that. But in the final round, you can actually put Dandelion on the field uh, after or before you use Pavetta, and then just boost all the Commandos in your deck manually. If you are inspired, so if this card is um, boosted, he will automatically boost the top unit in your deck by one as well. So basically giving you one point per turn. Um, the order ability can be used every two turns. So again, a cooldown unit. 
And yeah, it's just really powerful if you just start boosting the commandos uh, on the longer round three, especially. Um, if you don't have that, you can also use them in the first round, of course. You can boost whatever unit you want. And you can use the Sentry and Envoy to put whatever card you want at the top, if you're not facing Mill, of course. So you know what card you're boosting automatically. Then we have Shani, of course, the biggest cooldown unit in the game for now. Uh, she starts at 5 power and an order ability to summon a bronze human unit from your graveyard to the row and give it doom. So it's uh, spawning, not deploying. So you can't use this on a scout to pull another commandos on the field. Um, but you can use it for the crack marines, for example, which gives you already 12 points for this 10 provision card. And she has a cooldown of 7, so after 7 turns you technically can use her again. But if you use a winch, that of course is severely reduced. And then we have King Voltus himself, the most important card in this deck. 6 power for uh, 11 provisions. And the first time a bronze unit on your side of the battlefield is boosted, each turn you spawn a base copy of it at the bottom of your deck. So basically, uh, he has the base drummer ability, so boosting a card to the right. Um, but each card that is boosted, the first time a card is boosted, he will spawn a copy of that card at the bottom. So you want this to always be a commando. So keep that in mind if you use like a boost from Karak Marine, that you do actually boost a commando, because otherwise this card will trigger early and not on its own boosting. Uh, on Devotion, the spawn copy is also boosted by one, so that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, and again, as I said, he has the base drumming ability of boosting the unit to the right by one at the end of every one of your turn. The um, only thing that you might want to change is, and I think it's actually a good idea from the meta deck to actually get the Cursed Scroll instead of the Crystal Skull that I have now. But um, one of the final cards, Roche Merciless, is of course also very important in the Commandos deck. Because he has 4 power, damages an enemy unit by 2 on deploy, and if you kill that unit, you gain zeal on your order ability where you spawn a Blue Stripes Commando, another one. So I try to keep this card until the final round usually, so I have a Blue Stripes Commando in hand at every time. If you have two charges on your leader ability left, you can zeal both Roche if you don't have a two power target to kill, and the Commando that he spawns in one go and you don't have any issues whatsoever. And then of course Amphibious Assault, the Warfare card in this deck. The, uh, well, not the Warfare, there's multiple Warfare cards, but the Echo card in this deck, where you play a Northern Realms unit from your deck with a provision cost of 9 or less. So you can't use this to pull full test, but you can use it to pull most of the other cards. Um, and you can boost, uh, you will boost that card by one for each provision you go under the limit. So if you take a uh, Commando, you will be boosted by 4 points extra, because Commandos are 5 provisions. And then as I said, no, I said it was Crystal Skull, but I changed it over to Engineering Solution. Um, although I should probably take Crystal Skull, because I, in the original version of this deck, I had Kud Kudak, so I got the Purify, but I think uh, Crystal Skull is probably better with a Veil, um, or of course Cursed Scroll, where we are guaranteed to pull full test then if we start, which is also an important thing to note. And then our leader ability, of course, is Inspired Zeal, where you have three charges of boosting an allied Northern Realms unit by two and giving it Zeal, so allowing them to use their leader ability, uh, their order ability immediately which is something that is very handy for Seldkirk and, of course, your commandos. So that's it. Let's head into some example match to show you off what this is really doing, what, is, what this deck is all about. Now, the main difference between this and the meta deck and the way that you play this is um, Erland is missing, and of course you're missing a, a bit more consistency with Oneiromancy and maybe even the Cursed Scroll. But uh, the only difference would be Erland in the way that you actually play. Um, and Erland would be played after you play Pavetta, because of course Pavetta fills the deck with all the commandos, and then you use Erland to boost all the commandos in your deck by one. So yeah, that's the only difference. So the rest, you can still use this, uh, this, these example matches as a good example on how to play commandos. The other difference, by the way, is that I also don't have a defender, so I don't have Donimir in my deck, which I don't feel like I really need. Because you usually play the first two commandos and then maybe your uh, second one that still has the order ability loses that, um, well, is either locked or is destroyed. But that's not that much of a problem. As long as there's one commando still on the field, you can boost that, you can uh, switch that around. And in the very, very urgent cases, you could still use Shani to pull back a commando from your graveyard and use it further like that. But uh, yeah. It's definitely not that much of a problem to not have a defender. I usually play around whatever my opponent tries to throw at me. So, let's head into the first match. 
So the first match is against... Ooh, we're going into a mirror immediately. So Inspired Zeal versus Inspired Zeal. If they are using Alneromancy, that might mean that our opponent has a bit of a benefit here. Because they can, in fact, use... Uh, so wait, I don't need the Blue Stripe Scouts. I don't need two Karak Marines. And I'm still not getting... Alneromancy. Uh, not Alneromancy, a Commando at least. So I'm going to get rid of this and we get another winch. Okay. Huh, interesting. So we don't get full test and we don't have commando. So that's a very bad start and a very bad dis uh, display of the lack of consistency in this deck. But, 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 but. Yeah, let's start off with Dandelion then. So I'm not going to inspire zeal him. I can use the veil on Dandelion to start with that. And then now our top card is actually boosted, which is very interesting because that means that we can actually check out what the top card on our deck is right now. So it is a command though. So if I would have cards to pull the top card from my deck, it would be that commando. So we get Donimir now. Of course, there's nothing we can do against the defender there. So we're just going to start playing our own game here. So the obvious, obvious choice, of course, now going for John Natalis into uh, Amphibious Assault. Amphibious Assault pulling out one of the Blue Stripes Commander. I'm going to take the unboosted one. Then I'm going to boost the one that is already boosted. So this one goes up to 7 and I can inspire Zeal this commando up to 10 and use its order ability. And of course that commando is now up to 7. And then we get full test first. That is peculiar because that of course means that they miss a turn. Huh. Um, the interesting thing is that I can't really do much else. So I'm just going to put the scout down, uh, pull another commando and pull that out of the deck as well. So there we go. We have three commandos, but that's going to be it for now because we drew very, very badly and they have the Oneromancy consistency. So there we go. We're facing the basic meta version of that deck. Uh, the one thing that I'm going to do is still use Dandelion a little bit. I'm going to try and boost Saltkirk, since that's the card that I really want to go for. Then use Winch on Dandelion again, so I can use his order ability again. Um, and I'm going to boost... I uh, might as well boost King Foltis now. Um, and just have those good cards boosted in my deck. And that's going to have to be it, because of course our opponent now has the upper hand. We can't really do anything else. Our hand is really bad at the moment. We do have a, a few good cards that we can use. But for now, um, yeah, we're going to end it here. So that gives our opponent uh, seven commandos. Uh, no, that's actually going to be eight commandos. So that is pretty good on them. But we can still play that same game. Um, it's just going to be a lot slower than what our opponent is doing. As long as we actually pull full test, by the way. Because uh, it doesn't seem like we're actually pulling full test. Reinforcements right now is quite useless, so I'm not going to use that. Um, and I can actually use the Sentry and Envoy now as a pass card. Uh, I'm going to keep the Karak Marine, so I'm going to get rid of Winch. And we get Siege Ladder. This is... Not a good, not a good start. Definitely not a good start. Um, okay, let's use formation uh, on the melee row here with the Sentry and Envoy. Look at the top three cards. We're going to put Margarita on top of the deck. And then we got Roach Merciless. Okay, they're going for it immediately. They're going for all the commandos immediately. That is interesting. Okay, so they're pulling the last two out. Okay, that's fine, actually. That is absolutely fine. Um, I thought it was going to be worse than that. Um, so I can still use the Karak Marine now and just boost the Centurion Envoy by four. And we get a Megascope, so they're further filling up on Commandos there, which is still fine. I don't really mind all that much. They're still trying to bait us out. Uh, but I don't have a good option for... I'm gonna have to use Amphibious Assault now. So I can't use Amphibious Assault on Saltkirk, because that's definitely a card I want to keep. Uh, so I'm just gonna put another Karak Marine down. Yeah, let's put the Karak Marine uh, right over here. 
boost that one and then use the Sentry and Envoy to put Full Test definitely on top of our deck. There we go. So now we're guaranteed to pull Full Test, which is really, really good. We get another Megascope, so that's another 10 points that are going to be on the board. Uh, well, 8 points in total. So we're going to have to work towards that. But we have Full Test Sprite now. Yeah, let's just use Full Test Sprite, because that's going to be 2 turns every time. So there we go. We get a Bone Talisman now. That is a peculiar card to see. Um, I'm going to use the War Chariot now. I'm not going to be able to use much else for it. Uh, but I want to start filling out. Do I want to start? It's not really going to matter right now. But uh, there we go. Some bleeding on the board. Uh, I don't need the uh, the movement ability there. So I'm just going to use Sentry and Envoy again and get Shani on top. So now we know that we have Shani, Full Test, and um, what was the last card? Uh, Margarita on top. So that is basically the consistency that we wanted. Now, Amphibious Assault is probably going to be... Oh, not Pavetta. Do they still have Pavetta in hand, then? If the kingdom ahead. That is interesting. So now there's armor on both of these guys. So I don't really have the benefit of damaging them anymore. Uh, might as well remove some of the armor there. And then use Pavetta, because we need to use Pavetta anyway. Um, hopefully, because they're shuffled back into the deck, that doesn't really fuck with my, uh, my top cards there. But still they should be, because they shuffle they shuffle the cards in your deck and not everything else. So, um, Okay, so that's now Siege Ladder. Uh, it doesn't really matter which card I'm actually going to pull. Um, and that's enough. I could use Sentry and Envoy again, but I'm not going to. So there we go. It's not all bad. If the cards that we wanted are still at the top, this should still be fine. There's only three extra commandos in our deck. So we get Shani, we get Foltest, and we get Margarita. Okay, that is exactly the hand that we wanted. So let's finish redrawing. I'm actually gonna use Roach. Oh, wow. I mean, I had the perfect hand, so this was gonna work out really well, but our opponent just... Okay, that was a very weird match. But uh, there we go, the Sintrian Envoy definitely showing its power there. Because we got the three cards that we definitely wanted. And our, well, our remaining cards were also gold. So that was, uh, yeah, don't underestimate Sintrian Envoy. It's basically what I'm trying to say here. Okay, second match against Hidden Cash. Yay, Syndicate. Woohoo. Um, and we don't start with full test, so that's always nice. We do start with a Commando, which is always... Sad. Um, let's get rid of the Reinforced Ballista. No fault this just yet. Winch is going to be pretty useful if we can keep the War Chariot alive. Although... Yeah, let's not try to go into that too much now. We get a Siege Support, which can come in handy. So I'm going to get rid of the Blue Stripes Commando. Okay. Hmm. Since we don't have Foltest, I might as, I might as well start with uh, Dandelion. He's going to be a good card to have. He's going to be boosting cards on top of our deck regardless. So the top card right now is a Centurion Envoy. Um, which is ironic. But let's leave it at that. We get the Dire Mutated Hound. Interesting. We get the Hidden Gash, of course. And now I'm going to just put down the Siege Support. Because I'm going to push Dandelion here. Uh, I could boost the Blue Stripes Commandos, but that's not going to be useful, is it? Um, so let's try and hope for Roach soon. Um, and then I'm going to put down the Siege Support, so reduce the cooldown of an allied unit, which I'm going to do on Dandelion, so next turn we can boost yet another unit in our deck. Just building up for the next round, since we know that, uh, well, Syndicate is all about carryover as well, so... The more carryover that we can create, the better. We get Passive Flora Peaches. They're gonna trigger already because, of course, Hidden Cash um, boosts that in... Uh, well, Hidden Cash just basically reduces the uh, hordes to uh, by two coins, actually. Which means that, of course, for two coins, the Passive Flora Peaches are just gonna go up. Um, I could lock, uh, but I think first up we should probably go for the... Huh, the Commandos, but I don't have... Ooh, this is interesting. Um, so the commandos, definitely the commandos, but we don't have another way of actually making new commandos, which is 
I should have noticed that sooner, but nope, nope, don't use inspired zeal. We're going to be zealing this with the siege support, and then we're going to use dandelion to boost up another guard, which is going to have to be... Yeah, let's push, boost Shawnee there. There we go. And we get, okay, we get a pass. We get victory immediately. This series of games has been really weird, let me tell you that. So there we go, our third match then, again. Hidden cash. Let's see if this person likes to play further than that. We're not on blue coin this time. Uh, we still don't get, we never get full test. This is starting to get a choke. Is this just, you know what? Let me give you the advice to do include Cursed Scroll, although it wouldn't have helped in this matchup. But uh, we get a commander, we get Amphibious Assault, so we can work with that. We get a Siege Support as well. Um, but I think... Do we need Pavetta now? We don't need Pavetta now, so let's just get rid of that. We get another Correct Marine. Okay. It's not a perfect hand, but it is something at least. It's actually really bad. It's not a good hand. Uh, and our opponent has a buttload of coins, so they can try and take out... Almost every single commando. I think they they just won't be able to. This is five. Uh, although they will. They will actually be able to take out all the commandos. But yeah, I'm not one to listen to caution, right? So there we go. Commandos. Boom chakalaka. And get another commando on the board. We don't have full test either way, but... Yeah. I can still pull a scout out. And then maybe another one, but it's gonna be close if the commandos get destroyed i have a backup plan so it's not that much of a problem because that's where the other cooldown cards actually come into effect in case your commandos fail you still have a game plan which is uh, it's not going to be as powerful as other game plans but still it is an option and we get professored immediately on the second commando but again as i said before since we're not on blue coin it doesn't really matter all that much um and our opponent immediately gets the full pouch so let's put down uh blue stripe scouts with amphibious assault we're not going to be able to pull that from the deck but that still gives us the upper hand remember this is not jackpot so they're not getting extra points from the coins that they overspend with and I'm, of course, purposely now playing low provision bronzes, but also at the same time building up our commando count. So let's use reinforcements to get another scout into another commando. So that gives us four commandos in total. And then we get another Passiflora Peaches. So that's going to be 32. I can still do 14 points, so I can still do this. I need a correct Marine in the graveyard for Shani. I could still thin a bit further with Natalis, but I think I'm almost forced to take a leader charge here. Oh, no. Okay, so they're going for it. So Street Urchins, another three coins. And they're staying at nine. Very nicely, very nicely calculated, but we're gonna pass. So did that waste the Professor, but other than that, not that much trouble. And there we go, pass for our opponent as well. So we lost round one, but we did get to set up two extra commandos. So we still, yeah, we're still pretty good. I have Amphibious Assault, so that was not banished. We have Saltkirk and we get full tests. Ooh, that is a juicy one. Um, I could actually use the Siege Support, so I'm not going to use uh, lose the Siege Support. I'm going to lose the Correct Marine. We get another Scout. I can get rid of that as well. As if I can get another Commando. Oh, we're not getting them. We're not getting the Commandos. We're getting the extra Hidden Cash, so that's 8 points for our opponents. I'm going to put down Siege Support. We'll see how that works. And it does not get destroyed. We're getting the Sewer Raider. So more thinning from our opponents. But that's exactly what we're going to do. Because now we're going to go into... Uh, Roach. The Roach on the Sewer Raiders. We might as well do. We can then Zeal Roach with the Siege Support. And Zeal the Commandos with our leading ability. And get three more Commandos on the board. And now we have a nice pocket for full test. Of course, I'm very well aware that full test will probably only survive one turn. And I need to get Pavetta if I want to finish this off. There we go. We get Gellert, that is. No, Roland. I always, always switch those two around. 
So let's put Voltus down now. He's gonna continuously boost everything. Boost all the things. Then we get Horson Jr. damaging, probably killing Voltus with that, yeah. That was to be expected. Um, now I need to be careful. Uh, I can actually pocket the War Chariot. Let's put that over here. And put some bleeding on Horson Jr. Uh, we can pull the other commando out as well. So that still gives us the upper hand. And now they're getting into self-poisoning. That's gonna be quite some coins every single turn for them. Now, um, I am gonna play John Natalis into another winch. The winch is gonna go onto the war chariot, which gives us another four points of bleeding. Uh, so basically negating the peaches and going even further than that. So then we get Morelse, yeah, destroying the war chariot. And they're getting, yeah, they're getting closer now. Um, so let's use the Seltkirk card. There we go. Because I'm in a bit of a pickle. Um, I do need Pavetta. And if I don't pull Pavetta, I'm going to use have to use Amphibious Assault to get Pavetta. But of course, I want to keep Amphibious Assault to pull another commando from our deck. When we get Vivaldi Bank, opponent keeps pushing. And we get Payday on Seltkirk now. Okay, uh, that means that we're going to have to be, yeah, we're going to have to use Shani now. So let's use Shani now, because Shani actually gives us the the upper hand again. So we're using the correct Marine, and we're just going to boost Zol Natalis here, uh, so we don't actually go over that. Because now we're still better than our opponent. We have more points than our opponent, and we can play for nine points next. But if I need to use Amphibious Assault, I'm going to be close to being annoyed. Um, the backup plan would then be to use Pavetta with Amphibious Assault now. They're actually going for it. Interesting. Uh, we got Shock, which can be used to boost completely. Okay. So that is 21 points ahead, which is a lot. I'm actually not sure if I can go over that. Because with Voimir, that is nine. Well, there we go. And I think Amphibious Assault. To actually get to 10 points now, I'm gonna have to pull the correct Marine. Oh, which is definitely not something I wanna do now. Um, Pavetta is eight provisions, so seven points. But remember, yeah, the Peaches are gonna trigger another time. Uh, no, they're not. So that's 7, that's 55. Yeah, it's not going to be enough. Um, so I need to um, actually use the Rock Marine. Rock Marine is going up to 8, and then we can boost whatever we want, and it's going to be enough. Okay. But that means that we don't have the commandos in the final round now. Because I can't use Pavetta and pull another commando from the deck, so it's going to be useless. Okay. That one hurts a little bit. And we're also not getting good cards. We get, we get Pavetta, but yeah, as I said, no, 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 no. Uh, there are no cards in our deck that allow us to pull another uh, commando out. So this is bad. This is really bad because now, I mean, Pavetta can go and we get Margarita. Okay. So then we can put this in the back and then boost it, I suppose, but it's not going to help us that much because there's no targets for it yet. We get another hit with the winch. Yeah, this isn't good. Opponent even has an extra three coins, so... Okay, but that's actually pretty good. Um, that's only six points and I can lock it. Uh, so I can lock that. Like this. And then damage it once on the fire sworn. But yeah, this doesn't look really good. Unless they have a Purify, that would be really surprising. Probably didn't expect that. Morils is gone, the poison is gone, so I don't think they have another way of killing the reinforced Ballista. They're really hesitating. So what we still have is 7 points. So we're gonna go up to 19. So our opponent needs to do 15 points. And we get poisoned. 
Oh no, Vlad! Vlad! Okay, oh wow, um, this is still selected. Um, so I can use this to kill the Fire Sworn Salad. Uh, and then the winch is actually not gonna do anything, because um, I'm hitting the armor. Okay, so that's nine points they need to do. Can they do nine points? Can they do nine points? Still have three coins as well, so basically that's only six things that they need to do. Six points that they need to place, they have a spender. But I feel like if they had a spender that they would have just slammed it on the board already. That doesn't seem to be the case. Oh, that is a spender. And that is going to be enough. Oh, it's equal. It's equal, it's a draw. Okay, yep. Okay, fine. That was actually not a bad match. So, if I didn't, wasn't forced to use Amphibious Assault there, I could have still, um, or even if I didn't need to uh, play Pavetta regardless, I could have played Pavetta in that round and then get lucky and get another commando. It would have lost me half of my commandos, but it would have been something. But that's just the flexibility that you get with the commandos. So uh, yeah, GG, definitely. That was a really, a really fun match. But that's it for this deck guide um, for these uh, example matches. I think uh, we've showed off what this deck can do. And it's just a, 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 a bit of a variant on the meta deck that allows you to have an alternative uh, game plan. Just in case your commandos get shut down, you still have Shani, you still have Dandelion, you still have um, Seltkirk and Folder Sprite and all the cooldown units. You can still use that instead of your um, yeah, commandos if you lost them from turn one, if all the commandos are down. Um, the only thing, of course, is that this deck, as you saw in the example matches, is less consistent. So we might actually use Curse Scroll instead of Crystal Skull, but Crystal Skull is also really good in protecting Foltest. So it is a balance that you need to strike. But uh, still, I really like this version of Commando, so the cooldown Commando. is just a little bit of a variant of the meta deck. So, uh, yeah. So the meta deck, you can find that in our meta snapshot. The um, link is in the description down below. And as well, right next to that is the link to the Play Gwent website to the deck guide for the deck that you just saw in these example matches. So the cooldown commandos. Uh, let me know what you think about this deck. If it's uh, cool enough for you to even consider or you say, I mean, I still like the normal commandos. I can, uh, that's just my gist and we can work with that. That's also fine. Um, it's just, uh, I wanted to try something new on the deck that is really strong in today's metals by the way because of the fact that mill is so prevalent we haven't seen any of them for now but on the uh, pro rank which i'm still trying to get to i'm still i've been experimenting way too much to actually get to pro i'm gonna push the pro off to this um because I, I really need to do that but uh, yeah let me know what you think about this deck uh, if you like it if you didn't like it if you have any tips to improve upon it because that's what we're here for after all we're trying to help each other out so thank you enormously for watching this uh, gwent edge episode on the cooldown commandos and i hope to see you in the next episode of gwent edge thanks for watching goodbye and stay nutty